Hi, I'm Nikki. And I'm John from Pranksters in Love and Nikki and John Vlog. Welcome to Behind the Reel. Happy Valentine's Day and welcome back to Behind the Reel, the show that takes a real look behind the personalities shaping online video. I'm your host, Andy Smith, and today we have a special Valentine's Day treat for you, as sweet as a piece of chocolate made from soap. I've gone ahead and made six or seven of these little soaps that look exactly like chocolates. Um, I bought Nikki a box of chocolates. I'm going to replace all the regular chocolate with these, and hopefully she gets really pissed off when she eats some soap. Of course, I'm talking about Nikki and John, pranksters in love, who started pranking each other way back in high school and have rolled that into nearly five years worth of pranks, 180 million views, and a career centered around pranking each other on a daily basis. Nikki and John, welcome to the show. And you guys are watching Behind the Reel, so thanks for tuning in. I already said that. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah, uh -uh. I said we're watching Behind the Reel. No, she didn't. Well, now you know what you're watching twice. This is pretty much what you get if you watch our vlogs and our pranks. <laughs> Um, We're kind know, of cluster Fs. Our main channel is the Key to Banana 88, where we kind of brood brutishly and relentlessly, is that a, brutally is the word I'm looking for, prank each other back and forth. And then we also have a vlog I was like, vlog bar channel, I barely touched him. A vlog channel where we do daily vlogs, um, just of our daily lives and stuff like that. We just like to have fun. We, we love each other, but we like to have fun in our relationship. Oh, you wore that shirt? And be silly. That stain? Mm. Bing! I almost got you. <laughs> Nikki, John, thank you so much for taking your time to be on the show. Let's get to the important things first. What would you say are your top tips for marketers and video creators in general? Well, Andy, I think some of like the biggest tips I can think of is you really have to be passionate um, about what you do and love what you do. Like We really yeah. enjoy entertaining people. It's... It, I mean, we just love to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the garbage disposal off from underneath, and when Nikki starts cleaning the house, I'm going to sneak in the kitchen. I'm going to hide underneath the sink, and when she starts to do the dishes, I'm going to stick a bloody hand out of here, and hopefully I'll scare the crap out of her. Have fun with what you're doing and be consistent. Don't give up. Um, when you're first starting out, maybe set a day where you're and tell your viewers you're going to post a video like every Tuesday, every Wednesday, and be posting on that day so people know when to come back so you can maximize your views. Do you guys see any trends for online video in 2014 and how would you capitalize on those trends? Well, Andy, it seems like a lot of people are jumping into the online video market, posting more and more videos to YouTube. And we started posting vlogs every single day, making daily vlogs. So I guess that's really how we decide to capitalize on that. Just get as much content out there on the internet as possible. You guys are living the YouTube dream, making a living, doing what you love on YouTube, but every creator wants to know how much of your strategy is YouTube and how much of it is outside of YouTube so that you can support yourselves with your work. 50% of what we do is YouTube and 50% of what we do is licensing our videos off of YouTube. And we've been fortunate enough over the last um, four years to kind of work less and less um, and kind of leave our actual daytime jobs and after college, um, you know, our YouTube channel kind of took off organically. It was an accident. It was really, really cool the way it started. We uploaded a video. Um, it went viral unexpectedly. You know, we weren't really thinking about having a YouTube channel, and that's why our main channel's name is Nikita Banana Eighty Eight. Um, and not like prankster, yeah, pranky, pranky pranks. That was Nikki's um, <laughs> a, a screen Just name. Just a screen name in high school. So it's it's really cool that we were kind of. Uh, brought into this circle of YouTubers kind of organically and on accident, and it's been the greatest thing I think that's ever happened to either of us. You guys have done a great job finding different places to put your content, whether that's Break.com or MTV. Do you guys work with an agency, or do you do all that work yourself? Andy, we do have a manager who helps us kind of like manage all of everything outside of YouTube, but as far as everything um, inside YouTube, our YouTube channels, we have a couple different channels, we manage pretty much everything. Um, Ourselves. Do all our editing. Right do all of our uploading, all of our filming, everything ourselves. Um, and we think it's really, really, really important to stay independent as YouTubers. For us. For us. For other YouTubers, mm -hmm. it can definitely, ben they, some can people can benefit from being with a network, but we just think it's not really for us. Yeah. We think like we're doing just fine on, we're on our own, so we decided not to sign our channel with a network. 
However, I did sign my, I recently signed my game channel oh, over yeah. with full screen, um, just, you know, to kind of be a little bit more protected with video game stuff. Um, and I don't have a problem with that because it's not my creative content. It's, you know, I'm using their video games to make my videos. Um, and it's been a great experience. You know, I love full screen. They're really, really great. Um, I have somebody that I can email and I get an answer back really quick. Um, you know, they let me see how much money I'm making on YouTube and how much money I'm making from them so I can see, you know, my contract terms are being met and stuff like that. Uh, but that is a very, very big choice for a lot of people to make whether or not to go for a, uh, you know, network contract or not. Um, yeah, and it's different for everybody, like Mickey said. Mm -hmm. You guys have expanded your brand to include not only the prank videos, but vlogging and games. How important is it for creators to diversify the type of content that they make? Well, having a vlog channel, I really feel that it helps strengthen our bond with our viewers. Mm -hmm. um, People get to see who we are. On who camera. we are, yeah. Like, and pranks, although we like making people laugh, we like entertaining people, but prank videos, it's kind of like, oh, like, ha ha, like dance for me, clown type thing, you know, laughing, laughing at us, which is totally cool, happy to bring a smile to someone's face, but at the end of the day, when you watch the prank videos, I feel like you don't really get to know who we are, really. <sighs> so, honestly, I'm kind of scared right now. I have to go get blood work done and my chest x-rayed because I have to they have to make sure that I don't have cancer and I'm just like kind of freaking out you know like why you gotta bring up cancer yeah we really do love each other we have like a fur family we're huge animal lovers we have a, a zoo of pets at our house and yeah I just I really like that people get to know who we are. This is Thor. Everybody knows Thor, don't lick me. He's everybody's favorite little dog. It's always important to grow, you know, you never want to stop like growing and changing and succeeding. So, um, like I said, you know, we've started with our prank channel. From there, we started a vlog channel. Um, I started a video game channel. Uh, I also have a fishing channel. Um, and video games have always kind of been a big part of my life. I've played a lot of video games. Um, I've always been really good at them and pretty competitive. So I thought, you know, why not take that to the next step and just start recording what I'm doing and uploading it online and use kind of my main channel and our vlog channel to, you know, syndicate and send out all of the video game stuff to our audience. So that way I can kind of build my video game audience from an audience that I already have as well as, you know, capture new gamers and viewers from other parts of the web that I may not be able to on my vlogs or pranks. And I absolutely love to fish. Um, it's my favorite thing to do in the entire planet, fishing and skiing. So. I started a fishing channel, you know, why not? I'm a pretty knowledgeable fisherman, I'm very successful at it, I catch a lot of fish, um, and it, it's really cool to be able to share that with people all over the world. Yeah, do what you love, you mm -hmm. can film it, and there might be people out there who want to watch. Yeah. Just you having fun. If you're going to do it anyway, why not put it out there on the internet, right? In the past year, the public prank really took flight, but you guys have focused mainly on pranking each other. Why is that? It's really... Uh, like, we love pulling public pranks. It's just kind of, like, hard to yeah, there, there's get a out there. Yes, there's, there's a different, like, setup and recording process right. that we're not exactly used to or familiar with. And it requires a couple more people who kind of know what they're doing with camera angles and recording sound and stuff like that. We have so to it's get... something that we really, really want to branch out to and we'll definitely do uh, much more of this year. And we're probably going to start pranking a couple of our friends, too. Um, but it has always just kind of been us pranking each other back and forth our, our, pretty much our entire lives, our entire Starting friendship. Starting in high school. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of how we've just kept it up for a while. Uh, purple hair. You guys have pulled some amazing pranks on each other. Does that ever cause a real issue or is the result always, forget it, I'll just prank him right back? Well, Andy, you know, revenge is a dish best served in Nikki's hair. So <laughs> I guess, I don't know, why get mad when you can get even? And it really, like... It's a way for us to keep our relationship fun, which is hard yeah. for a lot of people to believe. You know, it's like, how can I get her back and how can I laugh at her? Like, she laughed at me. And in the end, it's, you know, it's always, we're the type of people that kind of, like, get upset for, like, five or ten minutes and then we're happy. I will say that Nikki got very upset when I proposed to her and I dumped a green slime all over her because she thought she was going out for her anniversary dinner, like mm -hmm. a makeup dinner. And she was just pissed but and that it was, was hilarious. That was extra sad then because we were like <laughs> poor college students and we couldn't go out for our anniversary be but on our, on our actual anniversary because we didn't have enough money. And then John tells me he's going to make it up to me 
and we're going out this night, and then I just get a, duck, a bucket <laughs> of slime dumped on me. Green slime. But you got a ring, so... I did, and I she still was very wear, happy wear the end every day. Well, speaking of the proposal, John, I, I have to ask, when are you guys going to finally get married? Oh, Andy. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. No, um, you know, we're doing a lot of different things. Um, you know, living in LA, we have a lot of business opportunities. So we're just, we're waiting for the right moment and the right time. But I'm, I'm not sure at this moment in time if we have a, a date in time yet. But we, don't we will have... definitely let you know for sure. Yeah, we'll let our viewers know when we know. Well, I Andy. do want to... <laughs> you can tell the viewers, I'll tell Andy. <laughs> Alright. Um, I mean, I want to get married. I do. I just, I really want to get married before I turn 30. So, preferably within the next couple years. Like but, John, you have you have five more years before I turn 30. No, I just, like... Five more years of freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Like, we live together. We have a family of pets. We've been living with each other for five years now, so... I mean, I, maybe you should just hurry up with this wedding process. It's not like anything will change. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't really like me. Yes. Yeah. What happens if you sign, like, Mickey Mouse on the marriage document? I feel like you're so mean. You're so mean to me, like, when you joke about this. Or you just, this. like, draw a little wiener instead. I mean, like, he wouldn't propose to me, and we wouldn't get engaged if he didn't want to get married someday. But I think now he's just kind of, like, pussyfooting around the whole thing. It's a true story. I know you two really pride yourselves on original ideas. What have been your favorite pranks you guys have pulled on each other recently? One of my favorite pranks is that recently I've pulled was the gorilla trunk prank. And let me tell you what, Andy, it was pretty simple. Um, you know, I just <laughs> went and hid in the trunk and popped out and scared the crap out of Nikki as a bystander actually came over and was like, I is think everything that's what okay made here? The video. Um, and of course we were like, yeah, everything's okay here. I'm just a gorilla in a trunk. Beat it. Um, was I was like the damsel in distress. <laughs> he was trying to rescue me. So uh, that was my most recent favorite. What about you? Oh my gosh, I loved the one that I did yesterday. I was in the bathroom and I just saw Ew. like a thing of sunscreen sitting on the shelf and I thought, hey, that looks like yogurt. And then, yeah, I just put the, dumped the yogurt out, put the sunscreen in there and then super glued the little foil top back on so you couldn't tell that it's been tampered with and I got John to eat that. I'm pretty sure you get all your ideas from me though. Just be like, in being how good I am at pranking people, you're like, man, I bet what? John would do this to John. That doesn't make any sense, and <laughs> anyone out there listening, like, you guys agree with me, Hashtag right? That does not make any team sense. Team John. Oh my god, there are so many more Team Nickies There's than there not. are Team Johns. There's oh yeah, oh yeah, there are. Right. Team John. Thumbs up for Team John. Nope. Team Nikki. Thumbs up for Team Nikki, too. Nikki, John, you guys can only be so cruel to each other for so long. Do you have any career changes in the future? Any plans for something to do aside from pranking each other? You know, Andy, we'll always prank each other. You know, it's a, a been a part of our lives. It's been a part of our friendship for we as long as we were pranking each other before been, we've been filming. For as long as we've known each other. Um, so we'll always prank each other. You know, we'll always blog, we'll always play video games, we'll always make fishing videos. But we do kind of want to branch out and do other um, forms of media and entertainment and always grow, you know, and take the next big step to whatever that might be. So we're always working hard on growing. I mean, you know, we never want to stop changing and growing and it's always fun to try entertaining more people. Yeah. And recently we've kind of reached out to a lot of different charities um, that we want to help up, help out with. There's a couple animal um, shelters and charities and Wounded Warrior Project, stuff like that, that we'd love to get involved with um, simply because we really want to give back to people who watch our videos. Without viewers such as yourselves, people like Andy, you know, like, that's, I mean, that's why we all have what we have is because of you guys and we are super appreciative of, mm -hmm. of it. You guys have a vocal group of commenters on your channel who think everything you do is fake and staged. Once and for all, let's hear it right from you guys. Are your pranks staged? No, we do not stage our pranks. And don't listen to what commenters say, Andy. Look at any <laughs> video on the internet. Every single video on the internet, there's someone saying, that's fake. Elephants like, don't paint pictures. <laughs> Cars don't go into oceans. Yeah, people just like to think there's this huge conspiracy out there. But we're just doing this to have fun with each other. Like, we love it. It's been a part of our lives forever. And, I mean... Like, faking pranks would be kind well, of boring like on our that, end. Like, yeah, the fact of the matter is, like, like I, I dumped a freezing bucket of water, ice water on Nikki when she was in the shower. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, it's like, that's just not something that, that you fake. I just, I just went and did it. 
and she yeah. didn't know it was gonna happen, so... Like, you saw it happen. Yeah, like, you know, and, like, the gorilla trunk prank. Guy was just hiding in the trunk with a gorilla suit. Ah! But we really appreciate everybody that comments on our videos, good or bad, you're watching, we're just happy that you guys are out there and you're taking the time to watch our video. My favorite thing is actually a lot of commenters nitpick irrelevant things to call a video fake. Like, uh, one time John didn't, like, wash his toothbrush with water first, which he never does. He doesn't rinse off his toothbrush with water first, and he's like, someone's like, nope, John didn't put his toothbrush under the faucet first, therefore this prank is fake. So... I prefer a little bit more pasty paste than watery paste. <laughs> I don't know why that's so difficult. So like, that's kind that of... Weird? That's Anybody? kind of become an inside joke to me. Like, I'll be at the grocery store and someone will be pushing their cart and I'm like, NOBODY PUSHES THEIR CART LIKE THAT! YOU'RE FAKE! <laughs> you guys grew up in Minnesota but moved to California, as do a lot of YouTubers. Do you see that as a requirement for success on YouTube? You don't no. have to live in California to be successful on YouTube. You can do YouTube anywhere you live. But there are like other things that we want to do and like other side projects we have in the works and been working on them for a long time. We need to be here. Like I actually, now that we moved into Hollywood, I, I think you do too, like want to go to some auditions here and there, maybe try to get into acting and uh, being in some commercials, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just to like expand a little bit. but. No, like, if you're in Ohio and you want to make YouTube videos, go for it. I, like, that's not going to, living in Ohio isn't going to hold you back. No. Yeah, and it's, I mean, that's exactly right. I don't think it's a, it's a prerequisite. You know, people may want you to come here when you get more successful, but I think that anywhere you are, and if you're really passionate about what you do and you love it, and, you know, you have a little bit of know-how with computers and cameras and editing and stuff like that, you can succeed anywhere. You two always come to VidCon and interact with your fans as much as you can. Do you see attending conferences like VidCon to be an important part of being a creator? I don't know how important it is necessarily important is for a YouTuber to attend it. I think it's a really good idea um, to go there and see your fans. But you know, if you can't afford to make it there, it's not the end of the world or anything like that. But it is an awesome experience. Um, we yeah. do love meeting our viewers. Yeah. It's so like nice to put a face to who's watching us, and we've just met so many people who are so nice. And I'm like, oh my god, you're just the the sweetest thing. It's so nice to meet you, mm -hmm. and that's. That's really fun. And a lot of people go to VidCon to network with other YouTubers too. So if you're looking for people to collab with, VidCon can be good for that. But I wouldn't say like... That's like it's when a... we get to see all our other YouTube friends like you, Andy. This is when, yeah. you, when you come to town. It's pretty cool. But it's, yeah, it's a really good thing to do. It's really awesome for us to meet people who watch our videos, you know, and we thank every single person who comes up to us and says like, I love your videos. They thank you. And it's like no thank you like we really love you watching our videos like it mm -hmm. has brought a lot of joy and happiness to our lives so um i'm it's kind of like a two-way two-way street for both viewer and youtuber well that's all we've got time for today thank you guys so much for being on the show do you have any last words before you go well thanks so much for watching us on behind the reel it's been a pleasure it's been great talking to you andy as thank you always very much. thank you and we'll see you guys on the flip side yeah Ugh. ew for reals. Well, there you have it, everybody. Nikki and John, make sure to stop by their channel and check them out if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll get a laugh or two or three dozen out of their pranks. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this week's show, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below, let us know how we did, share it around if you really enjoyed it, enjoy your Valentine's Day, and I'll see you next time on Behind the Reel. Simon, Simon, get out of the interviewer chair. This is not a Simon interview. It's a Nikki and John interview, thank you.